In this video, I want to show you how I take math notes in LaTeX um, using the Lix editor. And I really like this editor because instead of writing out code and then compiling it to a PDF, uh, it's a what you see is what you get editor. So as you write, you get to see what it is. And really often for my notes, I never actually compile them to PDF. I just look at them in the Lix uh, editor directly. And I find that's really helpful. You never have to chase down a missing bracket that ruins everything. Um, so this is the website for it, LYX, and it runs on all the platforms. Um, and here is what it looks like um, when you make a new one. So the nice thing is also you have a lot of buttons to help you out um, and things like that. So it makes it more of a graphical user interface than ordinary LaTeX. Uh, but to get to the heart of it really quickly, uh, if you press Command M, or in Windows, I think it's a Alt M or something, um, you get a little blue box. And inside a blue box, you can type math. So you can do x squared plus y squared equals z squared, um, and everything works the way you would think. To do uh, a display math, you do command shift m, and it'll make it a display math. If you do command shift enter, then you get a multi-line equation. Um, so this is equal to, uh, I don't know, a squared plus b squared, uh, and so on. So it's just really nice for taking notes like that. The other thing that's great about it is you can set shortcuts for things like sections and so on. So if I do control p2, it starts a section, the section, um, control P three is a subsection subsection. Uh, I really like to take bullet point notes it's control P I now I'm doing bullet point notes. Um, so super, super handy for, for doing math. Um, uh, there really is like, once you get the hang of it, you could really take notes in real time in a way that I find really difficult to do, um, in ordinary LaTeX and you never have a problem compiling, um, because it's, you know, as you go, you get to see what's up. Uh, other nice things about it in math mode, you have these uh, down here at the bottom of the screen, you have some extra features here. So for example, you can insert a uh, matrix. So here's a five by five matrix. Um, there also are some shortcuts for common things. So if you select something and you do uh, control M, now you have an option here. So it's telling you, look, these are all the options you can do at the bottom of the screen. Let me do it one more time, control M. And uh, one that I do a lot is square bracket. It'll put square brackets around everything of the default size. The, another common uh, one that you can do is uh, if you need a fraction, control M F and now it makes a fraction for you. Um, and you can, you can do it that way. Um, so lots of useful things. Um, the other thing that's really nice is it's very customizable. So if you go to Lix preferences, um, you can set more shortcuts. Um, so for example, I find it really convenient if I'm in a class with theorems and proofs, I can make a, a theorem layout happen. So if you do control P, T, I have it set up to, to pop up theorem, um, and then you can type in your theorem, and then you can, you can have the proof and so on. Um, the other other trick that I do in Lix is I use a template. So let me do file new from template, and I have a template um, for articles. And what it has is it has a whole bunch of uh, shortcuts here that I use a lot. Um, so it has all of the bold letters and stuff as two letter shortcuts, and that makes it really convenient to do things. So uh, you know I can do all the Greek letters, alpha, uh, beta, gamma, delta as two letter things. I find that speeds me up a little bit and there's some common um, ones that I do. Um, so, you know, if you like this, uh, maybe you check out Lix. I like it a lot better than uh, traditional tech editors for taking live notes. I also, in the description, I have a recent lecture I did where I did the whole lecture just recording my screen uh, in Lix and it's more or less real time. You know, there's a couple spots where I get a little stuck, um, but I thought you guys uh, might like it. Uh, okay, two other quick things I thought of that is sometimes handy in Lix. Uh, one is that math mode is actually really just LaTeX. So if you select something in math mode and you copy it, um, then it will paste it as uh, as actual just text. So here I copied it. And if I go into text mode and I paste it, it pastes the LaTeX. Um, so very often, if I even if I'm using actual LaTeX and I really need the, the things, I'll, I'll make my equations in Lix and then I'll copy and paste them over. Um, so that's one thing. Another thing is that if you do uh, command L, you get these little red boxes and then you can type actual LaTeX commands. So you can do slash whatever LaTeX command you want and it will run it as if it's an actual LaTeX command. Um, so some every now and then you got to put in some some random curly brackets around things and you can do that like this. Um, and last but not least, if you press command R, it'll uh, turn it into a PDF. So uh, you have it just like before. And it even saves it as basically a LaTeX file. So you can go file, uh, export to um, LaTeX, and it'll make a LaTeX file um, that has everything in it. 
Um, so very often when I'm writing an actual paper or something, I need that like really fine tuned control that LaTeX gives you. I'll do 99% of the work in Lix, export it, and then just do like the last little tiny like uh, markup changes that you need or use whatever uh, class you need. Um, maybe one other thing is you can also do Beamer slides in it. So like when I'm teaching a class that has a lot of slides, um, I, I have this thing for slides. And so here um, is my, my, uh, my template for slides. So I don't know, here's slide number one. Uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared and um, then I'll like, copy paste it and make another slide uh, all right and okay slides can be a little finicky about which slide you're in so these you got to be careful with these like red things um, that tells you what is in which slide versus another slide um, but again then you compile it into a uh, into a PDF and you just get uh, a beamer thing uh, just like you would want um, Okay, that's that's really it for links. Uh, check out the description for for more links.